Hello and welcome to this new section on portfolio rebalancing, the last section in this uh, course and the first lecture of that uh, in this course on practical approach for investing your personal finances. So the purpose of this uh, module or section is to give you an in-depth understanding of how to rebalance your portfolio. We have now seen that you've understood what are the various things that you need to, you can possibly invest, what are the differences between them, what is the approach, and you have constructed a portfolio. So how can you rebalance? Uh, and in this uh, lecture, we'll talk about basically two things. One is what is portfolio rebalancing? Let's define that for a common understanding. And why rebalance? What are the benefits of rebalancing? So what do you think uh, is the portfolio rebalancing? You have, as I was saying, you have understood the different asset classes, their risk and returns, their differences. You have determined your risk profile, very important, uh, and for the point of view of rebalancing. And you have determined the asset allocation and you have invested in the right instruments in each asset class. So uh, what is the portfolio rebalancing given all that? So portfolio rebalancing is that uh, based on the your risk profile and opportunities available, you had a target allocation. Example, you said I'm going to invest 60% in stocks and 40% bonds. So you went down from asset classes into types of asset classes and narrowed down to basically two investments in stock and bond and your asset allocation ratio was 60 uh, stocks and 40 bonds and that's a target allocation. Now, what happens is over a period of time, for a variety of reasons, as you will see in the next uh, uh, couple of slides again, is the, your stocks allocation rises up to 70%. It doesn't go up. And obviously, the reason could be either the bond prices go down or stock prices go up. So your stock allocation goes up to 70%. So, so what we call this is the drifted allocation. So allocation has drifted from a target of 60-40 to 70-30. Now, getting that back to target allocation is what is called rebalancing. So getting that back uh, portfolio to 60% stock and 40% is will be called the rebalancing of the portfolio. Let's look at two, uh, one more case to explain this in a lot more detail. So supposing your uh, portfolio was starting top left, 70% stock and 30% bonds, right? And that was your target allocation. That was your planned allocation. And that was where your comfort level was in terms of your risk profile. So you were like a kind of a bit aggressive uh, investor. And you decided to invest 70% in stocks and 30% in bonds. Now, over a period of time, one month, two months, six months, a year, stocks went up. Stocks value went up. Market went up. So your stocks allocation valuation will become higher while the bond will probably not grow at the same rate uh, it won't probably go down so your stock starts contributing 85 percent and that's what is what here we see is the drifted allocation now in re portfolio rebalancing what you need to do is you need to buy some bonds by selling some stocks so you sell some stocks and buy some bonds and you bring that to again 70 30 percent allocation and your portfolio get rebalanced. Now that is not the end of the story. Now over again another six months time or a year's time, now stocks go down. Your life is cyclic. And your stocks contribution drops to 55% where bonds remain at 45%. So you again need to rebalance by buying stocks now and you get it back to 730 again. This is what is called portfolio rebalancing. Right, so having understood what is portfolio rebalancing, the question is why rebalance stock? Why not let it remain at 85, 15 and then so that it naturally comes back to 70, 30 at some point of time? Any thoughts on why rebalance? See, let's look at why rebalance. And if your portfolio went up from 70, 30 stocks to 85, 15 and if you uh, if you let it remain as it is, the probability of further increase of gain from stocks is lower because already something has happened. And as we know, market is cyclical. So it is likely that in next one year or six months, it will either not, it will not go up at the same pace or it may even come down. So the probability of further gains, gains from stocks is lower. And all that gains that would happen in your stocks is a paper gain. 
So if the market comes down for some reason, all your gains will get wiped out. So what you need to do is to ground your gains there. And that is what balancing, rebalancing gains. So what you do is you by selling some stocks and buying some bonds, you make these gains real, you ground the stocks, you convert them into cash or into bonds where they are more stable. And this reduces your probability of losing the valuation of your portfolio. Now, so that's the reason for uh, doing the valuation. So you're back to 70, 30, you're grounded, you made some money and you converted them to bonds. Now market goes down further. Now, if your market goes down further, you have not lost the gains on your 85%. You have lost, you have partially converted them to bonds and only 70% of your portfolio gets affected. Now, by stocks going down, that increases the probability of uh, stocks now increasing and the gains in stock can be lower. So what you do is, if you do not uh, take advantage of this, you will not make those gains possible that you can make with your 70-30 portfolio. So you uh, regain rebalance and you again have a possibility of uh, the market going up and you getting more. So maintaining the allocation in line with your uh, with the, your risk profile also makes you comfortable with your portfolio. So two main reasons. One, it brings you comfort compared to your risk profile. And second, it allows you to ground the cash benefits that you've made on part of the portfolio without affecting anything. So having looked at what is portfolio rebalancing and why do we need to do, what do we do next? So in the next, we will look at how, what is the best way to do this portfolio rebalancing. So thank you so much for watching this first lecture of portfolio rebalancing. I hope you have again learned something new. Again, you're beginning to enjoy a few things and I do look forward to see you again in the next lecture.